fall camp rolling right along so with fall camp rolling right along we got to talk about the intel and the buzz that we're getting out of fall camp so there's a couple of high profile schools that we're going to talk about here one of which being ohio state now we've touched on ohio state during this fall camp intel run that we've been on the folks at letterman row are covering this better than anybody than anybody else so make sure you get a membership over there but they are very pleased with the progress of a transfer defensive tackle Taiwan malone and Taiwan Malone is a guy that has also a, a dual sport background, also played some baseball. Right now, he's just locked into football. And he is a guy that's progressed really nicely. And the reason why I think this is important for Ohio State for their success in 2023, think about who they have on that defensive line. You got Mike Hall in the middle, yes. But now you have him and Taiwan Malone that can add some depth there and they can go back and forth. But on the outside, you got the edge rushers, right? You got JT Tuimaloau, who put on a clinic and a half against Penn State. Then you got Jack Sawyer, who I think you still feel really good about in Columbus. I think you're still sort of waiting for him to have that big pop year. Not to say that he hasn't been solid for you, but I think that this year for him going to just playing defensive end, he's not really splitting roles anymore, playing like that hybrid role. It's just, hey, Jack Sawyer, get after the quarterback. You're really good at that. We're going to let you do that. Having a guy like Tywell Malone progress in the middle a big part of your success rushing the quarterback is what those guys in the middle are going to make you occupy with your offensive line. So I'm excited to watch that. I think that's important, and I think that's a note that we should keep track of as the season rolls on for Ohio State. Also keep in mind, too, how Michigan beat Ohio State previously. Ran the football, ran the football, ran the football. It wasn't because of personnel necessarily on the defensive side. Some of that was a bit of a bust schematically if we're being real but I think having another big body in the middle makes you feel better about how you stack up when you find yourself in that situation here the last game of the regular season really quickly make sure you're subscribed make sure you're following us on all the social channels at Jody Paquel Twitter and Instagram thank you so much in advance for that now speaking of transfers another transfer San Diego State Josh Simmons found his way to Columbus and he has progressed since the beginning of fall camp and they feel like he's gonna have a really good chance for them to start at left tackle and for him I mean that that is enormous to be able to have that side locked down because we know they haven't announced a quarterback at the time of us being on air right now with our luck maybe they'll announce while we're on air but I think they're pretty close to naming a starter whether it's Devin Brown or Kyle McCord but the bottom line is whoever you put back there will be a first time starter and you better have his bl his blind side locked up like, if I'm back there and I'm seeing ghosts or I'm having that kind of internal clock going off before it needs to because of the issues we have at left tackle, that's a problem. That's going to hamstring and put a flat tire in this Ferrari of an offense, getting the ball to guys like Emek Egbuka or Marvin Harrison Jr. or heck, even having the outside zone down with Trevian Henderson and Mayan Williams. So it's a very big deal to have that spot locked up. So the way they talk about it right now, to have Josh Simmons come in, progress like he is, locking down the left tackle spot. There's a reason why they make the big bucks in the NFL at the left tackle position. There's a reason why you see those contracts and the figures look the way they do. So very encouraging if you're a Buckeye fan from what you're hearing about him right now. And again, that's Josh Simmons, the transfer from San Diego State. Quarterback position, we're going to talk about it as we get a little bit further into fall camp. We've talked about it here many times before on this show. I want to go to another position, though, and that's the tight end spot. It is no secret they want to play multiple tight ends on the field, does Ohio State. And Cade Stover is a guy they are really pleased with in terms of his progress over the offseason. And Cade Stover is a name that you know. I mean, he's going to be a captain this year at Ohio State. He's a known commodity, really good athlete, was originally on the defensive side of the wall for Ohio State when he got to Columbus, has turned into a really nice tight end. He has really worked this fall camp to become a better route runner. Like they said, he's doing things right now during fall camp from a preparation standpoint and, and an in-practice standpoint that they haven't had him do previously. Like he's now running one-on-ones against the corners and working more routes on air drills. Like they, they really like where he's at. And so if he can progress... You can have a guy like freshman Jelani Thurman kind of come along and maybe be a factor for you later in the year. To have multiple guys to throw the football to, to also pair Marvin Harrison Jr. and Emeka Egbuka on the outside there, like they're going to have some options to throw the football. They would like to be able to incorporate the tight end like they did a season ago in Kate Stover's progress as a route runner so far during fall camp, I think is a very good sign. So let's go from Ohio State to the other team within that rivalry, as Ohio State would probably refer to them, not by name. We had Ryan Day actually on the show not too long ago, and he made sure not to say the words Michigan uh, while referring to Michigan. But we're going to talk about Michigan, and the folks at the Wolverine are keeping us locked in over there. And it is a fascinating situation right now at Michigan, because the mission right now is very, very clear. 
It's very clear. National title or bust. Yes, they want to beat Ohio State. Yes, they want to win the Big Ten. Those are still goals. But the ultimate goal is to get to the top of the mountain and have that national title crown. And right now, they are having a couple of position battles internally. It sounds like the, the tackle spots, the edge position, and potentially even center are all, I don't know if up for grabs is the word you would use, but they're having some good back and forth battles there. And the way that it was described to me, there is a very good chance that Michigan lets those battles go the same way that the quarterback battle went last year. I mean, it's not necessarily a gauntlet for them at the beginning of the season. Those first three games, they don't really play anybody to keep it a buck. So they're going to kind of let those things work themselves out. It sounds like early in the season, those three games, they're kind of developmental games, if you will. They're kind of an extension of fall camp, which is great for them. Left tackle, it sounds like Ladarius Henderson is going to be the guy for you, Arizona State. You've heard really good things about him. Excuse me, that's the transfer from Arizona State who came to Michigan. They feel good about him. Now, also, Jalen Harrell at the edge position. You probably have already heard about him if you're a Michigan fan, but he's a guy that I think is going to contribute for you on the edge. It's kind of the feel there. And then Drake Nugent is a transfer from Stanford. They think he could sort out to eventually be the guy for them at center. So some some battles going on in the O-line, but regardless, I think you probably feel pretty good about where you stand on the O-line based on what you did a season ago and based on who you have toting the rock for you with the best backfield in the country. At the wide receiver position, you know you got Cornelius Johnson. You know you got Roman Wilson. They're excited about Tyler Morris. They say he's kind of locked himself into that wide receiver three role. And if they can expand that pass game like we've talked about here a lot on this show, if they can do that, it's going to require this receiving group and these pass catchers to take that next step. A lot is made of J.J. McCarthy and a lot made about what they expect from him in 2023. You can't expect J.J. McCarthy to elevate his game if this receiving core doesn't do that as well. So keep an eye on Tyler Morris and they're excited about what he's done through fall camp so far. So watch him in that wide receiver three role. Going back to the defensive side of things, maybe just the roster as a whole, they feel like they are in a much more deep an athletic standpoint than they have been previously under Jim Harbaugh. Like I was talking to somebody that covers Michigan really closely, and he was just like, honestly, this team, more than any other team, feels like it is just a continuation of what they had last year. Like the buzz around Michigan, obviously the goals are the same, and that whole deal about beat Georgia, and that period they have in practice kind of got out. But to be real, like it's been a pretty quiet camp for Michigan. And not just because they've tried to keep as much info internal as possible. Like it has been very much so workmanlike professional business as usual like not, not a whole lot of extra stuff coming out of Michigan and so if I'm a Michigan fan I think that's good news I think quiet confidence no news is good news right now for the good people in Ann Arbor Michigan but nonetheless still a couple of things to keep an eye on a couple of battles that are going to wear on into the season it sounds like and you would imagine those live bullets they'll get in a game will help sort out who will be the guy there going forward throughout the rest of the schedule Let's, all look, let's go all the way down to uh, SEC country, checking on the good people in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and that's LSU. The Bengal Tiger has this stuff covered to a T. Shea Dixon and company are doing a phenomenal job over there. Denver Harris is a name you probably already know about if you're an LSU fan. And if you don't, let's catch you up to speed a little bit. Denver Harris was a five-star corner, was originally at A&M. Didn't work out there, hits the portal, comes to LSU with the entire portal overhaul they have in that secondary. They took four cornerbacks. J.K. Johnson, unfortunately, will not be available. So you got Zy Alexander, Deuce Chestnut, Denver Harris. Denver Harris started out fall camp, according to people that were watching practice, running with the twos. So you're saying, hey, Denver, got you with the twos right now. You prove that you want to play. You prove that you can be the guy for us. We're going to move you up to the ones, is, um, is how you would imagine that messaging was probably being relayed to him. Camp kind of wore on. Denver Harris running with the threes. And the internal buzz around Denver Harris, to put it simply, isn't extremely positive. And right now, he is away from the team, dealing with a what is described as, as a personal matter. He was also involved in a fight earlier in camp. It sounded like he played a role there, like just not really doing a lot to help himself, unfortunately. So they said he could be back with them by this weekend, is what Brian Kelly said. We'll see what happens. Now, here's my opinion. The concerning thing for me is there's a track record here with Denver Harris extremely talented nobody's doubting that LSU wouldn't have brought him in from Texas a and via the portal if he wasn't talented and they didn't think he could help them but the thing with Denver Harris now we, we keep stacking up these issues and things like this 
when you have such a downward trend, they don't usually have a sharp turnaround. And then somehow he just figures it out. Light bulb goes on and okay, he's, he's back with the team and he's contributing in a real capacity. Like this is one of those things that makes me very nervous as it pertains to his future with LSU and being able to be in that locker room. Cause LSU now they have a delicate culture and I say delicate, not in the sense that I know what's going on a hundred percent in that locker room. I mean, delicate in the sense that you're going from year one under Brian Kelly and doing it his way to year two under Brian Kelly. And we saw them at times struggle to be consistent last year. So what I'm trying to say is you got to have everybody in that locker room pulling the same direction. If I'm reading the tea leaves here and I'm seeing what's going on with Denver Harris, he's not pulling the same direction. And so I wonder if he's really helping the greater good here at LSU and if that's something they need to keep an eye on. So we'll see what happens with Denver Harris. That's the latest intel right now. You wish the best for him. Extremely talented kid. You hope he gets together. You hope he can help LSU. And I'm sure the people in Baton Rouge hope the same. As it pertains to the cornerback position, though, two transfers that I mentioned, they got Zy Alexander, who's running with the ones, and Deuce Chestnut running with the runs. Uh, Zy Alexander is a corner from Southeast Louisiana. And Deuce Chestnut is a transfer from Syracuse. So two transfers there contributing for them at the ones right now. We'll see what they do against Florida State, man. They are going to get baptized by fire in the SEC playing against, I guess, ACC competition. But nonetheless, that's kind of the latest when it comes to that corner position. Keep an eye on the offensive line. Or maybe don't keep an eye on the offensive line because they feel really good about it. They feel like they are worlds better than they were last year. The good on good reps that you get at LSU playing on the offensive line I would imagine is better than a lot of people Saturday afternoons they get during a season. I mean, we had somebody covering that. They said that Will Campbell had his one-on-one reps against Harold Perkins. So, I mean, that in itself tells you you're getting good work. Also, he won both those reps. So I don't know if it's that way every single day, but to to have the luxury of saying, hey, potential All-American on both sides of the football, y'all go ahead and make each other better. That's going to do good things for them when it comes to Saturday. So big time there for LSU. Much more settled on the O-line is how I imagine they would feel this coming year. And Will Campbell, uh, a very big part of that. Now, Camorian Pimpton is a guy I want to make sure we touch on here. Andy Staples on three. He did a great segment on this last night with Shay Dixon, so I want to make sure we put it on our show as well. He is a 6'6", 242-pound freshman. Freshman. Now, Mason Taylor, he's going to be the guy for them playing tight end, but to have another individual who can help you in the pass game if they bring him along accordingly, he's a guy that's kind of made some noise during fall camp. Mike Denbrock wants to play two tight ends. They want to do that. In the SEC, they want to be able to threaten the secondaries and, and, and have a personnel where they are just as good blocking as they are pass catching. That's how they would like to live. Now, Camorian Pimpton, having that kind of catch radius, it makes him someone you at least have to pay attention to when he's on the field, especially in the red zone if you're an opposing defense. So they like where he stands. I'm just curious to see what his role is during this season. Keep an eye on him, especially as the season progresses, because we all understand once you get to like week eight, you're not really a freshman anymore. Like at that point, you're an experienced guy and you've been around long enough to kind of know your role and know what is asked of you. So watch him and watch that tight end group because he's doing good things right now from what it sounds like in Baton Rouge. Appreciate you all tuned in live, man. Good crowd. If you could all like the video, we would appreciate that enormously. If you could also subscribe to the channel, we would have everybody locked in for the college football season. We're about to get rolling here. So thank you so much for that. Got to make sure we tell you all this though. The hard count is brought to you by the good people at Game Time. Now, I want to kind of paint a little picture for you. Let's say you have a loved one's anniversary, or maybe they have a birthday, or maybe maybe they're, they're having a kid. Bottom line, everybody wants to get to a college football game in the fall. And so the good people at Game Time are going to make sure you do that. They make it fast and easy to buy tickets to all the big-time matchups. And not just college football games, also like entertainment events. I'm talking concerts. I'm talking comedy events. I'm talking whatever you want to get to. Game Time has got the tickets for you. So what we're going to do here is if you go ahead and download the Game Time app and use code HARDCOUNT, you will get $20 off. Okay, so again, redeem code hard count, terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code hard count for $20 off. And if you find tickets that are in the same row and in the same section for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. So, Game Time, they're for the people, they're by the people. We appreciate y'all rolling with them because we roll with them and they're going to make sure that they get what you need. So, download Game Time today, last minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. 
Hey y'all, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.